Hello, hi. So I just got my pupils dilated and I can barely see anything and I'm just hoping this camera is in focus. But anyways, I am on a mission to end book shaming. I know that this will never happen, but every little bit counts, right? And basically there is this stigma that we should feel bad about certain books that we read sometime or that, you know, if people read books that are different from you, you should like dislike that and I'm sick of it. So today I am sharing with you some books that I am not ashamed to like and in some cases love because if a book makes you happy and if it has problems and you're willing to you know, acknowledge that but still like it, at the end of the day, you should not be shamed for what you like to read. And I am not ashamed of these books. It all started with a friend who you know, made a video, her name's Sophie Snow. She made a video about guilty pleasure reads and it got me thinking, you know, it, why do we even call it guilty pleasure? It shouldn't be guilty. If you enjoy something, then we shouldn't have to feel like the opinions of others is going to influence or affect our enjoyment of it. Whew, can you tell I'm heated? I'm a little heated, but anyways, I am excited also to share these with you. So to start off, a book that I am not ashamed to love is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. I know it's so fun to hate on Twilight. A lot of you people love to do it, but for me, I can acknowledge the fact that there is bad obsessive romance in this and that sometimes the writing isn't great and still really love the story because I'm a sucker for romances especially unrealistic ones that don't happen in this world. I wish that they could sometimes. And overall, I think that this is a fun, interesting romance. And whenever I heard Midnight Sun was coming out, I was so excited. But then a part of me was like, should I not talk about this? Because I know that people are going to hate on me for my choice of books, which is really book shaming and is actually messed up on their part. I'm not ashamed to love Twilight and I'm excited to read Midnight Sun when it comes out because overall, these stories are just fun romances. I eat them like candy and then move on and everyone else is still hung up over the fact that they're being read. Weird. I'm going to preface this by saying that I am 23 years old, okay? And I love reading these stories so, so much. But sometimes I feel embarrassed telling people that I like to read these types of stories or this type of genre because they're just gonna be like, oh wow, that's such like, it doesn't even count as literature. They're just such like fluff stories. They're for children. Why are you filling my feet up with these children's stories? I am not ashamed to love Winnie the Pooh by A.A. Milne and any other types of children's literature that I also enjoy, like the tales of Beatrix Potter, etc. Winnie the Pooh is the most beautiful, pure story that has ever been told, honestly, and I have never cried so much as in my life as I have cried at the end of Winnie the Pooh whenever Christopher Robin grows up. This stor these stories deal with such timeless themes. They're so creative and different. The illustrations are beautiful, and I shouldn't have to feel like saying that reading Winnie the Pooh or children's stories is a guilty pleasure because it's not something to be ashamed of that I would have to say guilty. It's just a pleasure. It's a fun thing. Um, these stories make me a better human. And so the fact that I should feel like I have to be ashamed to read them or say they're guilty pleasure children's books or make light of them, I, I don't like that stigma. Let's end that. Carrying along in that same kind of line of thinking is the fact that I love to read middle grade, specifically middle grade contemporary. For example, The Year We Fell From Space by A.S. King. This is a story that deals with themes of grief and coming of age, and it's so unique. And yet, if I talk about middle grade on my channel, there are always a few people who say things like, oh, you know, uh, my sister, my my kid sister might like this, or, um, or just like little comments that I feel like are nicking at the fact that, oh, you know, middle grade is not an appropriate genre to be read. Well, here's the thing. If you choose to not read middle grade, you're going to miss out on stories like this one in which there is a talking asteroid and there's just magic and purity in these stories, I understand that some middle grade is written, in which case the audience should only be middle grade. And those aren't really the types that I enjoy. But this book, 
the year we fell from space and many other of the middle grades that I enjoy are kind of timeless tales that especially in contemporary are very hard hitting and beautiful. And this is one of them. So yeah, I'm not ashamed to read middle grade contemporary. This next one, people even say that this doesn't count as reading. It does count as reading. These are books. I am not ashamed to love graphic novels. I adore them and they make me happy. It's a different experience from reading a book. Oh my gosh. But it's so fun. So this is Fake Blood by Whitney Gardner. It's a hilarious vampire story basically and it's just amazing and the artwork is so fun. And then also a middle grade graphic novel, Roller Girl. In fact, if you cut yourself off from reading the middle grade genre, you're going to cut yourself off from middle grade graphic novels, which with people like Victoria Jameson and Raina Tegelmeyer, who does the Smile graphic novels, you're gonna be missing out on such beautiful books. And these are so fun. And there are even lyrical graphic novels. Like if you're kind of like, you really enjoy literary fiction, there are literary graphic novels. And I honestly think that Sheets by Bridget Kimmerer is one of those and while it's a different experience from reading a novel and the fact that you know you're like having to transfer the images into a story in your brain it's still valid and it's still reading and i don't like that people say it doesn't count and i will not label reading graphic novels as a kind of guilty pleasure because i don't think guilty pleasure exist. Next, a lot of people might look down on the fact that I enjoy Christian fiction novels because I am a Christian and I find them fun. And in fact, I have read many, many Christian fiction novels, not recently, but I don't like the fact that I feel like I couldn't talk about my love of Christian fiction as well. If, um, for example, Julie Klassen, this amazing Christian fiction writer, she writes a lot of historical romances and I love them and I'm not ashamed of them. And I would not classify them or any book as a guilty pleasure read. Also, let's talk about adult romance because that's something that people like to bash on for some reason. For example, Nicholas Sparks. I'm not ashamed that I enjoy a good Nicholas Sparks novel. Do I understand that there are sometimes unrealistic elements of relationships and romance in them? Okay, sure, yeah, that's fine. But you see unrealistic elements of life in all other types of fiction genres, and I can acknowledge it here while also just enjoying the story. And the writing doesn't have to be literary all the time, you know? Like, this is just a commercial romantic novel, and I love it, and I love the notebook. And sometimes I feel like I have to be a little ashamed when I say that, yeah, I like Nicholas Sparks because it's almost become so mainstream that in the book community, we just like count it as invalid. But have you read this story? It's really good. And it has a lot of like dark aspects to it as well. So can't stand for that. Um, definitely not ashamed to read romance novels. And lastly, some people get upset about reading young adult books. My YA readers, you know what I'm talking about. They count our genre as invalid, as being too easy to read, or too silly, or too angsty. It doesn't count. We don't like it. Well, guess what? I'm not ashamed by the fact that I love YA novels, especially YA contemporary. And I know YA contemporary gets so much hate for being just like, Fluff and Air. Have you read this book? Have you read Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kimmerer? I find that some of the most hard-hitting, beautiful stories that I read are YA contemporaries. This one is a lot of fun, but it has deep undertones to it as well. And I'm not ashamed to read YA contemporary because it makes me happy. And that's kind of what I think I'm getting at here, which is just, if you read a book and you love it, then let's be proud of that. And who cares what the naysayers say because they keep naysaying anyways. <laughs> and if there is a problem with a book, like a social issue or something, then that is something to talk about and to like take with caution. But if people are just bashing on your favorite genre because they like to hate on what people read, that's silly. And what I'm saying is that at the end of the day, just love the books that you love. If there are issues with them, 
then, you know, acknowledge that, like Twilight, unrealistic romance, I acknowledge it, still love the books, and yeah, that's fine, because we shouldn't be ashamed of the things that bring us joy, especially just because other people discount it as a genre or a work of literature or whatever. <laughs> I was a bit heated in this video, but I'm so tired of us saying that things are guilty pleasures. Let's just have pleasures and let's just love to read. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the like button in the comments below. Let me know what is a book that someone else has kind of discounted that you've really enjoyed. Let's keep this conversation going because it's important that we keep talking about this until, you know, book shaming becomes like such a thing that people don't do and we're free of that. I mean, that'll probably never happen, but we can try, right? <laughs> and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday and sometimes Mondays when I have no chill, which is often. All right, book flowers, that's going to be it for now. Thanks for stopping by.